Welcome back to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And this one is Relics. Um, I'm going to do the Relics in just two videos. I'm going to do all the red text ones in one video. And what does that leave for the next one? Um, e -text. I know e -text don't have red text, but they really are red text gear in this game. They're basically two Relics combined into one. So I'm going to kind of treat them as red text and do those. So first, let's just... Go in order. Um, start with the Breath of the Seraphs. So, I don't know where to go with the Seraph Relics. Um, none of them really turned out to be hugely popular, especially compared to how awesome the E-Tech Relics are. But uh, I think some of them are interesting and deserve a little bit more play. But uh, we'll uh, get into all this as we go through. So, the Breath of the Seraphs gives you... 50% uh, bonus damage and 7.4 health per second at OP8, and those are pretty good numbers. But you only get this bonus and health regen for a short time after killing an enemy to gain a second wind. It's too niche of a use case for that bonus now. There are some people that play really up close, kind of risk play style. Um, I know some Kriegs, like some uh, Hellborn Mania Krieg builds go like this. And this could actually be a decent relic for that. Because 50% bonus damage, although that's going to be an additive bonus, that's still a big freaking bonus. Um, but the problem is, is you're only going to get it for what I'm assuming is 7 seconds. And that's not much. So, uh, I'm just not a fan of any kind of stuff to gear around fight for your life. Uh, I've already gone over, you know, both a shield and a gun that add fight for your life duration. I thought those were pretty bad red text abilities. So with this one, I guess A for effort, but uh, ultimately I think it's a bit of a failure. Um, then we go to the Might of the Seraphs, which is our melee relic. And this one is also kind of a failure. Um... The melee damage at 41% just isn't that large. It's not going to make it where a non-melee character can really melee. And for characters with a lot of melee, because of where it fits in the formula, it doesn't add that much damage to them. And then you go with the override cooldown rate. So with melee characters, zero. He doesn't have a melee override. And Krieg's is his stupid fire breath, which no one uses because it kind of sucks. So it's nice if you like to throw Scorn a lot with Maya, but Maya can't really melee in Endgame. I know I kind of have a joke melee Maya build, but uh, it doesn't really work that well. So OP0, sure, but OP8 not. Um, I do use this relic on that build, but, you know, Sal's got a melee override, but it's not that important to get it to that cooldown, so... Fortunately, this thing is just kind of a bust. Um, I wish they would have done something else with the melee, since override cooldown rate doesn't really go with the melee playstyle. So if they would have done this with something else other than the, the cooldown, it would have been a lot cooler. Whether if that was some kind of damage reduction or I don't want to just go with a regular action skill cooldown because that's a bit OP but uh yeah they could have uh, come up with something better I think although those seem like they go together they don't really do it that well so two down nothing too great so far and then we go to the blood of the seraphs this one I kind of like um I'm going to show you why so, I'm going to, I think I have a shield, alright, take away a bunch of my health. Now I'm going to add a bunch of health. I have something here that I need. There we go, that's the ticket. So, this is kind of cool, but it ultimately isn't as cool. Um, you get passive melee health regen. 
which is nice. Um, I talk about that a lot in my builds, how I like sustenance for that exact reason. But it kind of sits in a weird no man's land, and this is why this doesn't get used. So, the Blood of Terra has got more health regen per second, but still not a lot. But then there is uh, the Blood of the Ancients, which just gives you more max health. So if you really want a health stack, you're going to use Blood of the Ancients instead of Bone of the Seraphs. And Blood of the Ancients also gives you some more ammo. Um, so there's not really a great use case for this. Now in the OP levels, dots can be dangerous. Now I could see doing a Maya, maybe I'll do that, like a kind of a Maya DPS nurse where you go 10 out of 5 in sustenance wear this and uh, plus uh, an evolution and just really stack that to make it hard to kill you but that's going pretty niche so there's not a lot of great reasons for this um, it's kind of cool but the problem is it just you're better off just st stacking health better with a bigger percent to max health and forgetting the regen and letting your skill tree do that. And that's kind of where... I'm just going to skip to the blood. I'll come back to that when I'm going a little out of order. Where this one comes in. Um, that health regen per second, it can help, but there's just so many really good relics that I don't know if this is really the most necessary relic, and I never see it be really being used because it just does this. I think it, for it to do this, the percents need to be higher, and I think that goes with the Blood of the Seraphs. If that was 2% and this was 3%, I can see some people using this. But that being said, you know, you see it fill in my gauge up fairly quickly there. And it's not about... This health regen isn't about health gating. It's more about surviving dots and just surviving the little ticks of damage. So I don't think either of these are terrible, but most of the time you're better off health stacking with the blood of the ancients and kind of going with these two. And next that leaves the coolest of them. Actually, I'm going to take this off for a second. I just happen to have the Becca. That wasn't even planned. But, uh... You can see here, I'm going to manually fire the Becca. A little finger fatigue there. And I'm going to do it again. Okay. Now, I'm going to equip the Shadow of the Seraphs. And you can see some of those shots are coming from the Shadow of the Seraphs, not my finger making me shoot it a lot faster. Now I'm going to do it slow just so you guys can see. There's a two shot, there's a two shot. So, especially on Jacob's weapons, this is great because it really increases your fire rate. And yes, with zero you can stack it on top of two fang. Which is a hell of a lot of fun. Especially if you like Jacob's weaponry. Uh, also fun with Jacob's shotguns and pretty much anything. So this is the winner out of the bunch. It took a cool skill that a character had that was unique to that character and gave it to all characters. I think that's pretty awesome. So this definitely goes down as one of the better red text ones. In fact, I'll uh, throw it over here. Away from the others to show it's a winner. And that's the loser pile. Not saying none of those can have use, but out of all those Seraph Relics, we only got really got cool one cool one. So, next we go to the Sheriff's Badge. Which, do I even have a pistol on me? No. Well, I have the Grog. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good uh, use case for it, but, uh... Sheriff's Badge is very cool. So this is dropped by Nisha, of course, the Sheriff. Um, like an Aggression Relic, you increase your damage... Uh, like a heart, you increase your fight for your lifetime, which is kind of the dumb point of it. Um, the cool thing is fire rate. Damage plus fire rate 
equals all the win. When you look at the numbers on this, this is almost like a mini wreck, but all the time on. Uh, 23.5 and 56. Oops. I'll just do this. So 50, 30 and 50. So a little less damage, but more fire rate. It's almost like giving you all the time wreck on a pistol. Um, I'm going to do the grog without that on for a second. And one more time. And the drunk effect doesn't help. Because I was unprepared with a better pistol to show this off on. But, let's let the drunk effect go away. You can see the difference in that fire rate. So, more fire rate is obviously huge, more damage on top of that, and it's a pretty sweet relic. Um, if you're doing a pistol only build, it really is the only relic that competes DPS wise with the bone and can even beat it. Or uh, can beat out an explosive relic. And I wish we had these for more gun types, I really do. And I'm going to kind of get to that in the next video with the heart relics. So next, I'm going to skip to the deputy badge. Which also has that bonus fight for your life stuff that I don't give a shit about. But increases shotgun damage and reload speed. Now the damage isn't as much. Unless this one has bad parts. I thought it was higher. But that reload speed is really important because shotguns typically have small magazines. And a lot of them actually have long reloads. So maybe I should do a slow hand. So I'm going to quick take this off like I did with the other ones. So you can see that reload. One more time. Now to the badge. And hopefully you can notice that, because it is quite a bit faster. Then, uh, with a twister. That's with the badge. And then without. And it's still pretty quick because it's a Jacobs, but uh, even with Jacobs, because you're reloading them so often, the deputy's badge is a pretty big help. So both of these are uh, pretty big winners. Um, let's see what's next. So, Sheriff and Deputy go in the winner's pile. And next we have Captain Blade's Auto Idol. This thing is close to being really cool, but it's not really used. And I might go and play with this relic some with some characters. So I think it's got more potential. But like a lot of the Captain Blade stuff, the penalty... Well, this one penalty isn't even that bad. So here in OP8, when you get a kill, you get 8%, 8.1% of your health back. That's kind of cool. Um, it's like a little kill skill there. And you get reduced fight for your lifetime, though, by about 3 seconds, which is kind of hefty, but if you don't go into fight for your life a lot, that's not bad. And just getting health back on every kill is not bad either. This could be really cool potentially on a gauge with blood soaked shields since that takes away health when you get a kill and gives you your shields back this would pretty much negate that and make her pretty damn uh, beefy um i don't think maya would really need it much it might be cool with the zero because zeros can be really squishy um sniper zero especially so between like this and innervate with maybe like a legendary hunter build because you get the health back while you go into deception as well. Uh, those three things alone could allow you to really play Moxie free. Uh, and you already have that cooldown from the class mod so you wouldn't need the Bone of the Ancients as much. And Zero already has a lot of damage. He doesn't need the Bone. So this could maybe be cool on some Zeros. Uh, I never really see it used and maybe there's a reason for that but uh... I don't know, maybe it's worth playing around and uh, experimenting with it. And that's it. That's all the red text relics. There's not really that many. 
Um, this is one area I think the pre-sequel did a lot better with is uh, Red Tex Oz kits. Because there's only really three good ones here. Um, I'm going to throw, I guess, this into its own little pile of interesting. But uh, like I said, I've never seen anyone use it, so it might not be that good. But uh, yeah, these these three are definitely all pretty awesome. These are all just not quite there. And part of it might just be because the E-Tech relics are so damn good. And that's why I'm going to do the E-Tech relics in their own. But there's also some things on E-Tech relics that kind of drive me nuts. So uh, let me know what you guys think of these relics. What are your favorite Red Tech relics? And uh, what do you think about uh, how Gearbox did with them? Uh, whether they kind of nailed it or missed the boat. I honestly think they kind of missed the boat. Um, I think relics were a huge improvement from Borderlands 1 to 2. But uh, I think they kind of missed out on the Red Text ones. Either just on your passive health ones, like the Breath of Terra and the Blood of the Seraphs, just not quite enough health regen. Or the other ones just not that interesting. Or, you know, well, I already covered them all, so... Yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Uh, one more Relic video next, then on to Grenades, and then on to the pre-sequel. And with the pre-sequel, I will start with Lasers, because they are the most new and the most interesting. So uh, that's the plan for this series, now that it's kind of getting close to being done with Borderlands 2. So thanks once again, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.